All right, as we uh, get started on our next lecture today, we're going to focus a little bit on uh, beef cattle performance records, specifically at the cow-calf level. Uh, and this could be both for purebred or commercial operations. So some things that we've got to think about, and, and this slide has a couple of pictures. One, there's a ranch that's uh, on the left side, pretty progressive ranch. You can see they've got a cow there, and we've discussed this cow before where she's uh, um, a very productive female. She had her first calf at two years of age, and then uh, has had a calf every year after that, and, and then the breeder, per, culled her out of the herd when she was around that 14, 15 years of age. So as you can see, a very productive cow. She's got a weaned off a calf that was uh, somewhere around 700 pounds at uh, seven months of age. So those are some of the targets that, that we may be wanting to shoot for, depending on where you are located in the United States uh, and your production conditions. On the right is more of an operation that uh, is kind of a year-round uh, breeding and calving season, uh, not sure when, what the ages of those calves are, but as those calves are falling around that cow and, and uh, just looking at the ages of those calves, they're probably around 12 months of age. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, you can see they're, they're, they're certainly smaller probably than the calf in the picture on the left. So again, if uh, with those two pictures, they, they really simulate or show uh, how one herd is managed and then the other one is not necessarily managed very well. Uh, and so in order to manage an operation, you've got to be able to collect some data. And there's that saying that's been told time and time again, you can't manage what you don't measure. And that's, that's kind of what we're talking about here is, is looking at uh, what are some, some key points and some key records that we would want to utilize uh, to begin making some changes to our operation to improve the efficiency of them. All right, so let's discuss, uh, as we talked about, you can't manage what you, me what you don't measure. Let's talk about just some key uh, measurements that we would uh, incorporate uh, into our cow-calf enterprise. Uh, so again, some questions on first, to, to measure performance, we've got to have some kind of individual identification uh, in order to uh, try to keep up with records on some of the individual cows within the, the operation. Uh, you know, just as we talk about identification, some of the reasons why we identify cattle, one is ownership, uh, and uh, that's the most common practice of identification is, is placing holding brands on those cattle. Uh, that way that, uh, that is the most reliable way to uh, put your name on your animals. Uh, 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 tagging, uh, tattooing, all of those factors um, uh, again, tattooing is permanent, but uh, it's hard to read that uh, when cattle are running by. Uh, tags, ear tags, they can come out. There's not necessarily an approved method of subcutaneous electronic identification uh, in cattle or, or chips, what they say sometimes, in horses and dogs. Um, but uh, the most foolproof would be a, either a freeze brand or a hot iron brand uh, to prove the ownership uh, of that animal back to the, the rancher there. The next reason we identify cattle is disease surveillance. And the old uh, brucellosis program or Bangs program is probably the most uh, uh, commonly known uh, disease surveillance program dating back uh, about 30 years. Uh, the way we've used that, that identification, the old clip that we put on the ear of cattle uh, to identify uh, whether those cattle have been vaccinated or not. Uh, one of the more current programs would be the trichomoniasis uh, eradication program here in Texas. Uh, the other reason we do it is measure individual animal performance to try to figure out if, if they're performing up to par or maybe their superior program. And another reason we identify cattle is marketing programs uh, and further ad added programs. So at weaning, they may have a tag in them to denote whether or not they're part of a special branded beef program or some other kind of marketing type program. <clears throat> when we think about ind individual identification, specifically trying to develop a numbering system to individually uh, identify your cattle from one another, uh, there's a lot of different numbering systems out there. Some people use the uh, last digit of the year and part of the identification number. Some of them relate them back to the cow that the calf came out of. So if the cow was 228, the calf's number will have a 228. Uh, the calf's tag will be 228 
so that's a related way to uh, pair those up. Uh, some many breeders, and especially on the purebred side, they will utilize a, a, um, a letter of the year type numbering system. So as you can see here, according to the Beef Improvement Federation, uh, you can see that uh, if you look at the H year, which would be 2020, uh, or if you come on down to, to maybe 2018, that would be the letter F. And so if you had an animal that was 112, it would be 112F, and that would denote that that animal was born in 2018, uh, as you can see there. And so one of the things that I mentioned was the Beef Improvement Federation, and the Beef Improvement Federation is a group of uh, purebred and commercial producers uh, with the goal of uh, improving uh, the production of cattle uh, through genetic improvement. And so they have different standards for, uh, as you can see, the year codes here, but as well as the calculations and some things that we do. Um, and so we'll refer to that, those Beef Improvement Federation guidelines, as we progress through um, the lecture today. We'll also uh, make it a resource. The uh, most current Beef Improvement Federation guidelines will be a resource that you can use to help you uh, calculate some of the problems that we'll have on homework. So as we look at the, the overall, measuring the overall efficiency of the operation, why don't we want to look at the production of it and, and see how the cattle are producing. And, and one of the most important traits, as we've already mentioned at the cow-calf level, is reproductive efficiency. Uh, and then also as we tie that back to the economics to look at the profitability of the operation uh, and where we can maybe cut areas as well as improve areas there. So again, those are some reasons why we, we record the performance uh, of the operation. Many producers will simply, as far as their, the extent of their record keeping, may be just enough of the, the, the income and expenses to do their taxes. Uh, but it, and that's a good baseline to start with, but you really need more than that uh, to begin to, to, to pinpoint where we can maybe improve our income or where we can maybe cut our cost uh, and to, to improve the over, overall profitability. So uh, that's how we look at from record keeping and performance. We want to really identify those superior animals uh, for breeding stock is another reason why we've got uh, record keeping. So if you're a purebred producer, this is extremely important to, to look at uh, trying to uh, identify those animals uh, to help you market those cattle, but also if you want to bring them back into the herd as breeding stock as well. And that could be on both the bulls uh, and, and females as well. Uh, and it, on the flip side, identify those animals that uh, you want to cull from the herd. Uh, and it could be maybe the cow that's uh, weaning a calf that's 100 pounds lighter than the average of the rest of the herd. Uh, or maybe a cow that missed a calf uh, two years ago uh, and now we're in a drought situation, so now we need to think about, well, what animals could be the prime target to cull? Um, so again, those are some culling strategies that, that we can utilize as well with it. So it's not only just identifying superior, but also those inferior animals uh, that, that actually bring down the profitability of the operation. It can help us identify management and health problems. Uh, and one example that we mentioned there, 90% of the cows are pregnant but we only had 70% of the cows wean uh, calves. So what happened? Where, where did the losses occur? We went from 90 to 70% calves weaned. Uh, and, and what happened to that area? And so those are some questions that we can, we can look at. And also pregnancy rates in those cattle. We can start to look at well, what, uh, you know, what cows, how many cows we got bred. And then we try to identify any problems with there as well. So, uh, as we look at that previous example with 90% cows pregnant but only 70% calves weaned, we've got to look at where those numbers came from. So we've got a palpation rate on this slide, then we've got to look at percent calf crop born, and then we can look at percent calf crop weaned. Now our death losses may be occurred somewhere between when they're born and when they're weaned. Now the next question is, well, was that because of illness? Uh, losses, so maybe there was a respiratory problem or maybe there was a, a, some challenges with scours in the herd uh, or maybe it was as simple as calves began to disappear. It wasn't because those calves were disappearing from predators or maybe somebody theft 
those types of things. So the more data points that you have from, from uh, pregnancy all the way into when they're weaned, it allows you to try to pinpoint and figure out where the problems are so you can begin to make some management changes to improve uh, the efficiency there. Uh, weaning weights uh, of these cattle. Uh, and, and I think that's important, especially in today's time, when we look at the cost of raising those calves and the cost of maintenance on those cows and, and looking at trying to, to make sure we're, we've got weaning weights that, that are really respectable for our area and that all of our cows are pulling their own weight and they're producing those calves uh, with acceptable weaning weights. We also take it a step further and combine weaning weights and reproductive efficiency and look at pounds of, of calf per cow exposed and try to figure out, well, uh, that combination of, of reproduction as well as weaning weights there. And we'll talk about calculate that here in just a little bit. And then looking at calving interval on those cows. And, uh, and that's extremely important because we know we can, uh, in most cases, a cow will have a calf every year and she can breed back within about 88 days of calving. Uh, and we can look at those calving intervals on those cattle. And if those cows are stretching out, uh, maybe they need to be uh, culled from the herd. Or if we're looking at maybe our, our calving interval keeps on increasing by a little bit year after year, well, what are the reasons for that? Is it a nutrition reason or is it maybe some bull problems, uh, disease problems? What are, what are the challenges that we're seeing there to increase that calving interval? So those are some kind of some really basic key measurements that we will talk about today.